On this episode, we talk to Kendall Connor about improving communication with visual engagement. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Church Leadership Lab. We love to have conversations that help empower healthy churches. Super excited for another one of those today. Coming to you from your hosts, Scott and Casey. Casey, share with the good people how you're doing. I'm good. I'm good. It's, it's, I hope you can't hear it. It's pouring rain right now in okay. good old Oklahoma because it's springtime. Um, yep. But it is springtime you know, for those of you listening in the future in like November, it is spring, which is why all yep. these peonies, these beautiful, like all the flowers grow. So it's, you know, it's a weird, it's like we have tornadoes, yeah. but also gorgeous peonies. So it's a weird. You know. And flowers. Yeah. What a, what a, what an analogy, right? What a, what a, or is that a metaphor? Yeah. Sure. What a metaphor, right? Sure. I know. I'll, I'll there's there's beautiful flowers in the midst of your tornadoes. <laughs> oh, wow. That was. Let's close in prayer. <laughs> Thank <laughs> right? you for coming with that yeah like a day yeah. yeah it's like a it's like a sermon sermon series or sermon closing or something yeah. like that so feel free to use that anybody for your charge yeah, my, it's my gift to it's you wild you'll wake up and it's like beautiful sun and then uh look over and it's like it got really dark and it's you know 11 a.m yeah. it's thunder and light you're like oh yeah that's what we do get in the shelter Tis the time let's go yep Tis the season yep. so well, today we get to have a conversation uh, with Kendall Connor, and man, we we get to cover a variety of topics and and things. But one of the things that that I know that we discuss is what does it look like to communicate with the church and do that in a way that's visually engaging, that um, draws people in, that really connects with people, and really have a conversation about how to do that, some things to avoid, but also church motion graphics and how they kind of support that, some of the origin story. Uh, I thought it was a really, really great conversation, especially for two uh, former worship leaders or current or kind of, or what, however you want to phrase it. <laughs> Life, yeah, it's like a chronic thing, right? It comes and, comes and goes, but yeah. no, I, I love that Kendall kind of talks about, I don't want to give anything away, but creativity and using visual literal images to connect emotions, not to play on emotions, but to lean into the emotional element of a worship experience and how, how yep. powerful imagery and visual engagement can be as, as a part of a sacred time of worship. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great conversation and uh, would love to share with you a little bit about Kendall. Uh, he's a ministry focused creative uh, with a deep passion for the church who brings 20 plus years of experience in production, design, and communications. Uh, and as a creative pastor at his local church and with eight years at Church Motion Graphics, uh, he has empowered countless ministries worldwide uh, with creative resources. Uh, hosting the Worship Media and Tech Facebook group, Kendall Fox fosters collaboration and growth for thousands of church leaders and volunteers every day. We're so happy to have him on the podcast, and we hope you enjoy this conversation with Kendall Connor. Well, Kendall, thank you so much for coming on the Church Leadership Lab. We're excited to have you here. Oh, man, I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. Now, hey, let's jump in. Um, you know, everyone just kind of heard your bio, but everyone knows sometimes there's things that go beyond that. So what's something that doesn't make the public bio that all your friends, all your family would know about you? OK, so you you may think like, OK, well, well Kendall, he's he's into tech. He's into media. You know, surely, you know, that's how he spends all his time. But actually, um, where I like to spend the majority of my time, any any chance that I get right is outdoors. I'm very outdoorsy kind of person. So nice. uh, any so, any time I can be out hiking or camping with my family, my wife and I, we have three young boys. And so uh, we love to, to go camping with them and uh Take them out in, in, you know, anytime we can be surrounded by trees or uh, come on, best thing in the world, two trees, string up the hammock between them. If I can be in a hammock, it. it's like 10 out of 10 would recommend, right? <laughs> So are are you a, are you like a hammock camper? Like you'll just take that and go? You know what? That sounds like the next level. I think I need to get to that. That'd probably be a lot better than like the sleeping on the ground part of tent camping. So uh, I probably need to take uh, your recommendation on that. 
It's it's less frustrating to set up. I'll tell you that much. Um, I can compared believe that. to the tent, <laughs> but you know, to to each his own. Depends on the the, the situation. You you uh, built. This, you skipped what I was going to say. I'm like, are you in a camper? And you were like, you went straight to like, nope, or string it up on trees. And I'm like, okay. I, I, I like to I like to tell my boys that camping is a character building experience. You know, it, you get out there, uh, but really, it's probably just an excuse because uh, I just prefer the tent. <laughs> I'm probably yeah. crazy for that's, that. That's what every dad says like, <laughs> at a frustrating experience, right? right? It's character building. Character building. Which means the kids are having a terrible time. <laughs> like, I don't want any so more funny. character. I have enough character. Yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. I'm maxed out on the character. <laughs> yeah, I've met my quota, Jesus. I don't need any more character. Let's go. That's good. It's too funny. Well, Kendall, you have served either in the church or in all these things, right? You've got a pretty extensive history in serving churches or churches at large for, for quite a while, right? But what roles like, have you actually served in ministry? And then how did that transition into church motion graphics? Uh, uh, well, you know, at, at this point, it's kind of been, uh, what role haven't I done in the church at this, <laughs> at this point? I've done a little bit of everything. I first I <laughs> started serving. Yeah, yeah. I first started serving in church when I was 15. Um, you know, I, I got into church as a teenager and I wanted to go all in from the very start. You know, Jesus had just, you know, done something big in my heart and I wanted to be able to, you know, use the gifts and abilities that he had put inside of me to be able to, to just go all in and to help other people find the same thing that I found. And so right away, uh, almost again, at age 15, I um, started serving in my church and small town church uh, in, in Virginia where I grew up. And at the same time that I first got plugged in, they bought their first projector. So if you can imagine that, and I just love technology, love media and things like that, even um, as, as a teenager. And so it was this perfect moment where I got, I was like, well, man, I can use what God's put in me and in my interest. I can, I can use this for him. And so I first started serving in church tech and running the lyric slides and, mm -hmm. you know, had a camera in my hand every Sunday. I mean, I just went all in doing these things. And as I got a little bit older, I started to get involved with things like um, I remember the first time I got to speak at a youth group and got to speak on a Sunday morning. And so I got involved in that. And as I got older and went to Bible college and I got a ministry internship at an inner city church in Baltimore. And that was where I got my first minister, full time ministry job uh, and got credentialed and became a pastor. And that was really where I felt like I learned, um, you know, how to pastor people that, you know, pastoring isn't so much uh, standing in front of a crowd. It's really, you know, living life with with those people and caring yeah. for them. And, you know, so I've done a little bit of, of everything in that way. And then. About 10 years ago, I felt like God called my wife and I to be a part of this church planting team. And so we moved to North Carolina to be a part of this church plant with some of our friends and things that we had met along the way. And if you know anything about church planting, it's all hands on deck, right? You learn it all. You, you know, can, uh, can you hold a microphone? Okay. You're on the worship team. Can you, <laughs> uh, you know, can you click a button? Okay. You're going to be in production. You know, so yeah. I've, I've been involved in a lot of different spots, uh, throughout the, the history of our church, um, here in North Carolina. And, you know, a big part of that is, is the creative side. And so, something that has always been in, in my heart is, is really trying to bridge that gap between the church and creativity. And so mm -hmm. no matter what role I've, I've been in, I've tried to bring that creative element and help creatives to, to get involved. And so um, that kind of made it an easy transition as I got involved with CMG, with Church Motion Graphics, because I loved working with people. I loved helping churches. And I had kind of been there in their position, serving in the tech booth, uh, trying to figure out what's going to go on our screens. What's, what are we going to say on social media? What are we going to teach that week? You know, all those different elements mm -hmm. just kind of made a natural fit into stepping into the, my role at CMG. Yeah. I, I'm curious in your journey in, in the, the production world, did you ever work the overhead projector? <laughs> you know, uh, 
I feel like uh, I saw, I, I just caught like five minutes of that in my journey, right? Cause remember, I mentioned, right, that we just, I walked in yeah. and it's like they just, the timing worked out. They had just bought a yeah. new projector. But that week before, it was my, uh, my friend's mom up there changing all the overhead projector, you know, the, the weird slides. And I, I'm telling yep. you, uh, sometimes, uh, when I get frustrated with tech, I'm like, you know what? Just bring back the overhead, you know. It could be That's easier. A, give me a decision yeah. timing. You gotta, you gotta move from you know one page to the next and get it just right. Like that was a special skill. Just give me a translucent, <laughs> translucent sheet and a super hot lamp, and, and <laughs> we'll call it a day. That's it, right? That's it. I love it. Well, if you're in ministry, then you know church operations can be a huge challenge. There's a lot to do, little time to do it. And whether it's just you or you have a team, my guess is you have a full plate. So how do you do things like communication and engagement, stewarding your finances, managing your digital presence, fostering community, and so much more in a way that builds a healthy church? Well, answering that question was the goal of creating the Guide to Healthy Church Operations. We wanted to take our 40 plus years of experience serving the church, combined with wisdom from various experts to provide a blueprint for how you can navigate the ever-changing world of church operations. In this guide, you'll find things like how to improve member engagement and participation, building into staff and volunteers, making better decisions with clear metrics, the essentials of financial stewardship for churches, and so much more. And of course, we wanted to give this to you for free. So there's a link in the show notes to download the Guide to Healthy Church Operations. And we would love for you to grab a copy and use it to help grow a healthy church. Well, uh, I know that um, given your perspective in, in ministry, you've kind of seen a lot. And then not only serving in the church, but serving churches. Uh, I know sometimes in ministry, we kind of have the tendency to do something one way and, and just kind of keep doing it that way. Uh, the problem is you can often spend time then on the wrong things. And so more time is going to the wrong things and, and ultimately there's less time for ministry. So from your vantage point, where do you see church leaders spending time on things, specifically uh, talking about communication um, that might be wasted time? That's that, that's a really great question. And, you know, we all know that time is a important resource for ministry leaders. I've never met a church leader that just said, oh, I've got so much free time. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like time is, is so limited, right? So, you know, you always want to make sure that the tasks that are filling your to-do list, right? When you're in ministry, whether you're full-time or um, part, you know, by vocational, whatever it may be, maybe you serve on a volunteer basis, the time that you do have to spend on ministry, you want to be able to focus on people. And so, you know, that that's what God's called, called you to do. I, I feel like so often um, we get caught up in doing things that um, they, they do take our time. They do, you know, and, and ultimately they aren't the things that we feel called to do. Um, I like to say, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you're getting that R, uh, ROI, you're getting that return on investment, that you're actually like the tasks that you're doing um, are going to matter at the end of the day. And, you know, don't be afraid to take a step back and analyze what you're doing and, and really make adjustments as needed. Um, something that my pastor told me when I was growing up is don't, don't hog all the ministry for yourself. Try to get other people involved. Surely, if you really were to take a step back and look at your task list, whether it be in communications or any of the things that you're doing in your, in your ministry life, there's some things that, that other, you could pass on to other people. There's some tasks that maybe you really like seeing them done your exact way, but really, do they have to be that way? You know, probably not. If we're, if we're really honest, so I feel like don't hog all the ministry for yourself. Take a chance on people. Um, you know, I like to encourage people. Something that I love is, is anything that you can automate. Think about the task that you're doing on a, on a daily basis, a weekly basis. Is there something that you could automate so that those things are happening automatically? Uh, I was just talking with someone this week about a feature that's in Amplify where they, uh, where you can, uh, it can automatically remind you to follow up on certain tasks, right? On, on that connect card from that Sunday or can automatically send out 
um, uh, remind you to, to send team members birth, uh, birthday, happy birthday messages and things like that. You know, automations and things like that, things that are on that list that you're just, you know, could I be spending my time um, in, in a more valuable place? I could be meeting with a person rather than, you know, on my computer in this situation. And so, um, you know, to go back to your question about communications, you know, a lot of times we're communicating things in multiple places, right? We're trying to to make sure that the social post is up about of, about an event, or we're trying to make sure that it gets mentioned on a Sunday. I would just, uh, one time-saving thing that I would just recommend is, again, to analyze, are those things working? You know, like, yes, we checked the box that we announced the men's breakfast on social, yeah. but is it actually reaching anyone? Because there may be a better place, a better way to announce that. Am I using all, you know, my time wisely if I'm posting it to 50 different places or would it be better to really invest my time on communicating really well in one or two places? Yeah, that's really good. And I think kind of taking that step back to analyze, is this working? Like yeah. what, what is the definition of working in the first place? So you can kind of know yes or no. Um, so I think asking those questions are, are really smart if you've defined what yes actually looks like in the first place. Wow. So true. Um, we kind of Great skip that point. step sometime, but we, we all serve churches of all shapes and sizes. Uh, everything, I mean, you mentioned like church plant and our city, even like in your past, you've served in a lot of very different spaces, but thinking about churches of any shape, size, where they are, if they're brand new, they've been around for a hundred years, Yeah, thinking specifically about visual engagement and what you do. I'm curious if you have any top of mind maybe tweaks or changes that any church could make to improve that visual engagement? Uh, that's a great question. And I guess I would say don't underestimate the, the, the power of visuals. Visuals are, are such a powerful tool because I feel like the, the, the main thing in, in this day and time that we're fighting for is attention, Right. We all know how our people's schedules are, are, are constantly filled when we're doing one thing. We're thinking about what's coming next. We're um, constantly fighting for attention. I just was um, uh, reading or hearing about something this past week saying that when people watch TV shows now, they're, you have to have communicate things in a way that's going to work because that you have to know that they're also going to be on their phone at the same time. Right. So we're in this day and time where, where we're communicating things. We're fighting for attention. Uh, don't estimate the underestimate the power of visuals. You know, the old saying, like a, a picture is worth a thousand words. Any church can use visuals to grab the attention of their audience, wherever that audience may be. You know, we spend a lot of different time planning the exact spoken word that we'll say on Sunday or, you know, we're learning the words to a song or, you know, how exactly we're going to write a social post or an email um, but when really when we can add a visual element to any of those, it's going to go really far. It's going to take your message farther than the way that uh, than it would be just on their own as, as plain words, as pl plain text. And so anytime that you can add a visual, it's going to it has the potential to inspire people. You know, if you have the right image, it can, um, you know, evoke emotion. It can generate interest for and it really. Even in, in, in a service, right, it can bring excitement. It can make things exciting when you use a visual on your church's screens. And so, I, you know, any opportunity that I get on a, on a Sunday morning, if I'm talking about something, I'm trying to find a photo. I'm trying to find a graphic or an image that I can use with that. I think about when we're singing a song, you know, that's talking about um, new life, you know, like showing using a motion background that shows nature, shows yeah. new life. It's going to help you to feel it. You know, it takes us so much further than just the plain text. And, you know what I mean? Like the right graphic can can help promote that event in a way that just, you know, it just takes it to the next level. And so, you know, I always tell people you may be surprised. And, and, and again, this, this is coming from my lens as a person who, you know, is all about motion graphics and using these graphics. But I'm just telling you, in my own experience, the power, like the, you may be surprised at just using that new pack on a Sunday morning. It just gets people talking. They'll say, Oh, I loved, I love those visuals that you had up on the screens. I love that background. And it gets people's attention. It gets people talking. 
And, you know, someone who hasn't been engaged, you know, they're there, they're in, they're in your service, but they haven't paid attention in six months, right? For the first time, they may, you know, look up at that screen for the first time and really take notice of whatever you're trying to communicate that day. And so I, I think it makes a big difference just to use those visuals and anybody can do that. I'm curious, just because of what you do, you, I'm not, you cannot name names, but I used to have to do a lot of copywriting. So I naturally like look for, for typos and things like that. Do you, do you ever look at graphics and go, what a horrible choice of image or like this, this has nothing to do with this, or it's just, it's all text, all copy. And you're like, there's no pictures here. Like you cannot name names, but does that, does that come up for you quite well, a bit? I, I, I tell you that the, the thing that stands out to me the most is when just because it's a trendy thing or an, or an image oh, or a yeah. style or a graphic is really popular in that <laughs> yeah. season doesn't mean it's going to translate to your specific right. event. And so, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you know, you've got flowers are really trendy this spring. Okay. But you know, that cool. may not Great. be the perfect image <laughs> for, for the men's event. Right. Or, you know, like you don't want to have the hardcore, you know, grungy text, you know, promoting the nursery. I mean, like these things, those are the things that are cringe worthy to me. I think we can have a whole episode episode of what not to do or things that made things, yeah, images that yeah. made Kendall cry. <laughs> so. well, one, of, one of the things I think with, I with um, not only imagery, but I think with lighting as well, honestly, I've had a tension with that because yeah. there is this, there is this mm-hmm. tension in which like we're not putting on a concert or not putting on this performance, yeah. that sort of thing. So I felt that tension, especially as I served as a worship pastor, like, how much do you use those things? How much don't you? But one of the things that I started thinking about was yeah. the way that architecture was used in building cathedrals and mm-hmm. the fact that there was actual tools and artist design that created these environments where you walked in and there were visual yeah. things that created awe and a sense mm-hmm. of the grandeur of God and, and a right. number of things like that. And we we don't kind of have the same architecture, but I sort of wonder if things like mm-hmm. s- visuals, imagery, lighting, if that's sort of like our cathedrals today that we can use ultimately to lift people's eyes to the beauty, the majesty, you yeah. know, the holiness of God. Yeah. You know, that. Scott, it's, it's, it's a great, that's a great way of putting it. You know, <laughs> I always think that whenever you're going to add any of those elements to your service, you want to have a good why behind it. And, you know, it's not just because it's cool. It's not just really you want to allow you want to ultimately, as you said, point people to God and, you know, using different backgrounds and setting the atmosphere and making it just right, really creating an environment that encourages people to worship. There is something really special about that. And there there's something to be said about there are or people that are serving in your church that have gifts. God's put something inside of them to create the great environments, to use lighting and to shape that and change that environment in a way that not everybody can. And there's people who can make graphics and use those visuals and combine them all into something that is really special. And God put that in them for a reason, right? Like I would say, let, let, let those artists be able to use their creative gifts to, to, to create. And, and I believe that if we do it with the right heart, with the right, uh, if everything is intentional, then we can point people to God that it won't be distracting because, right, we never want to be a distraction with any of these elements for production. We want to help people to lean in, to draw closer and ultimately leave having heard a message. Right. And so um, I love the way that you put that. It is like the uh, cathedral, the architecture of today. It can, it can go a long way. And I love seeing those people be able to use yeah. their creative gifts in that way. Well, I'd love to kind of uh, switch gears here just a bit and just kind of hear the story. I know you've mentioned CMG, you know, church motion graphics a few times, and I'd love if you could just kind of share, I love um, like Marvel, Spider-Man, all that, like the origin stories, right? I'm a, I'm a sucker for the origin <laughs> story movie. Um, so can you kind of jump in, share a bit of the church motion graphics origin story? with us. I love that. And this is I love that. And this is the closest that I'll ever get to being compared to Marvel. So I kind of like it. this. This is, <laughs> this, this is, I feel like I've arrived today. So they're going to love it. They're going to love it. You know, uh, as CMG started over a decade ago, church motion graphics, right? 
it really, it was all started with, with a passion for two things, as you might expect, the church and, and motion graphics, right? Being able to combine those two elements. And I, I can remember back in the early days when CMG was just getting started, um, I wasn't connected with CMG yet. And I remember when they first came on the scene, things, they were just, just getting, um, kind of introduced to the, uh, the church media world. And at that time, uh, I had been kind of learning church media and doing different things. And I had uh, a blog. I was blogging everything that I learned uh, on a site called The Creative Pastor. It's still active today. Um, learned everything that I learned with media related. I just wanted to help other people and share it. And so I had gotten connected to CMG through that site. And I can remember back in the day, I mean, tell me when CMG first got started, we, they were still perfecting the formula of what makes the perfect, uh, you know, church motion graphic and kind of seeing them. But I, I saw that they had a great heart. And I always said, you know, like if there was any way that I could work with them, I'd love the opportunity. And I didn't know at the time, um, how God was going to align things because you fast forward a few years and we had this desire in our heart, God to put that dream to be a part of this church planning team. And I was in a full-time ministry position. And so I needed work, right? I, I knew that as I, to, to get it to North Carolina, to be able to keep food on the table, make ends meet, I was going to have to find something outside um, of this church job that I had to do this. And so um, when the time came, the friendships had already been created. I mean, the way that God aligned everything. And I remember when I had the opportunity to join the team, um, it just felt like everything God had set everything up in that season. And so in just a few years, it had gone from, I had no idea CMG existed to CMG. Now I was now working on the team and I was able to help take the efforts that they were doing and pass them out to spread that information out into the world and kind of help with the communication of those. So I've been, I've been involved with CMG. Um, I mean, for, for most of the, of the history and seeing how many people it's helped, seeing we started a Facebook group, right? And that was something that was just radically different than what we were seeing in the space and being able to get people involved and hear from them. What, you know, what kind of packs would you like to see? What kind of motions are working in your churches? And so I feel like, um, from the very beginning, even those packs, I mentioned those. CMG from the start was was somewhat different than what uh, other producers and things that were happening at the time because people were getting excited about these new pack releases and that was something that just it really um, inspired me it made me want to just keep going and so I look back and I, you know I've been with CMG now for eight plus years and you know it it's been cool to see how everything has come together and now, you know back in the day it was just motion graphics and these days it's social graphics and it's yeah. sermon slide templates and all of these other things and it's really grown into something much more than just um backgrounds that go up on your screen i love thinking about where where we've come and where we're going and like mm -hmm. how quickly technology yeah. changes and even things like the mention of a facebook group eight years ago that wasn't maybe a thing or it was a growing thing and then to to tell that group then it's social. What is social? <laughs> like all those yeah. things in a, in a relatively right. short amount of time has, has become a pretty big chunk core of the business that wasn't even a thing, you know, not yeah. that long ago. But um, again, thinking about the past, but also where, where we're going, as we know, uh, Ministry Brands has recently acquired Church Motion Graphics. So having been on both sides, what are maybe some of the things that you having some tenure on that side, what are you excited about, about this partnership and then the future of where graphics are going in relation to the, to this new environment? That's, um, that's a great question. You know, as, uh, as CMG has come on to the ministry brands family, you know, the, the first thing that, that I picked up on is, uh, the ministry brands is, is a team of a lot of great people. Um, I've, uh, working with CMG in the past, you know, we had a, a small team and we were small, but mighty, right? We accomplished a lot of different things. But the first thing that I noticed about ministry brands is, man, there's, there's, there is a lot of very talented people here. And the more people that I've met, including the two of you, I mean, I've really experienced, um, I, I, I can't, we were welcomed in, our team was welcomed in with open arms. And I can't tell you how many people that I've met that have really, um, 
uh, been able to pour into me to invest in me since I've been involved on this team. And, and that got me really excited from the start because I had people who believed in me, who really just loved CMG and what we were doing. And, and I saw right away because there's so many people, talented people and so much that they could kind of bring to the table that really I felt like it was going to be like pouring rocket fuel onto what we were already doing at CMG. And, and I've seen it happen already. I mean, we've made improvements just in the past few months that I just, I, I never knew that we would be able to do. And so I feel like because there's so much talent, there's so much, um, uh, great ideas and vision for the future. You know, the world changes so rapidly, right? You know, we get new technology. It just pop came out of nowhere. AI, AI came out of nowhere. And so now we're having, now that we have this team that has so much experience and so much talent, we're able to have conversations on, okay, well, what, you know, what does it look like to use these different technologies? What does it mean? You know, how are people going to need CMG a year from now, five years from now? What, you know, how, how what, so we're able to ask those questions and then we've got, um, you know, just big vision for where this can go while still keeping the heart that I right. feel like has always been there of just caring for people and trying yeah. to meet their needs. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, and ultimately like that, that's the goal, right? Is how, how, how can we continue to, you know, at, at a macro level, continue to serve the church with the tools that we're creating, with the content that we're creating, what the, the graphics, media, all of that stuff. Like the goal is that it serves the church and that it helps grow healthy churches. And I mean, that's, I know what, what we all are hoping to contribute to. And, and speaking of which, like our goal is, in this podcast is conversations uh, that help empower healthy churches. So we always want to hear from our guests. In your opinion, what's one essential component of a healthy church? Hmm. Well, I love the idea of straight out of scripture that we come to serve and not to be served. And as ministry leaders, you know, I, Something I'm always reminding myself is, Kendall, it's not about you. It's not about me. And, you know, I really think that if we can just have the mindset of being able to help others, to help others succeed, to help other people to get closer to God. You know, I always tell our, our, our teams at, at our church on Sundays, you know, we want to roll out the red carpet for our community on Sundays. You know, we want to create an experience that makes it really easy for people to connect with God. And if we would just magnify Jesus in those moments and help people to see his love, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to feel like we accomplished something. And so, you know, serving the Lord, serving the Lord with gladness, remembering that every Sunday is somebody's day, right? Every Sunday is someone's Sunday. And, you know, I, I think, you know, having tools like, like CMG and, and everything that ministry brands does, it makes it easy to serve because you're not so caught up in the nitty gritty task, right? that you can actually go and serve people to focus on people. And I think if we have that mindset of I'm just here to serve, you'll, you'll go right every time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so appreciate you sharing that. Um, and just love our conversation. Uh, we're not done yet though. We're going to keep going. Uh, we're going to jump into a section that we call our final five. They're going to come at you fast, rapid fire. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm up Most for it. I'm guests up for the can't challenge. even handle it. They, yeah, they struggle <laughs> this part of the show, but we support them with our love and they get through it. Okay. So we're going to get through right. it together. I'm, I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> I love that. I love that heart, Kendall. All right, here we go. Uh, first one, what's one book that you'd recommend to church leaders? Mm. Uh, the people normally say the Bible. Can I say something else? <laughs> yeah, Bible's assumed. Bible, Bible's assumed. Bible is, is, is a given, like right? Uh, yep. Let's see. Let's see. There's, the uh, there's a really great book. There's a really great book that I like about uh, church tech. It's called, don't, don't, get, don't Be Afraid by the Name, but it's called, uh, I Love Jesus, But I Hate Christmas. And the heart behind it, it's kind of a strange title, but it's a great book by um, a guy named Todd Elliott that um, focuses on how you can easily get burnt out by big events as you're serving as a, as a tech guy or a creative in the church. But uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a really great read, whether you're serving in the creative or tech elements, and just hear the heart about how you can keep loving what you're doing and loving ministry, even when you have big, big plans like Christmas, uh, on the schedule. It's a great one. 
Yeah, let me let me tell you. Anyone that served in production worship ministry, they hear that title and I they're feel like, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I get I, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that resonates with me. I get it. I get it. I I didn't at first, but as soon as you said big events, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, oh oh yes, I, well, I right. feel that. Say bold, less. Bold no. title, but it's a it's a great book for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, Kendall, you have to be honest. You have to tell the truth, or we we will fact check this. What is number two? The last thing that you listened to on your preferred streaming? Uh, let's see. I'm a Spotify guy, uh, and I listen to all kinds of music. Okay. Uh, let's see. Last thing I listen to. A good go-to is uh, there's a guy named Blessing Offer. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was on The Voice back in the day. Uh, it's got a, like a, like just a great vibe to it. Um, al- always a good go-to. Blessing Offer. You have to look him up. Good shout out. What is okay. your favorite piece of technology or software? And uh, you can't see your phone. That's the only rule. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, something I'll say is I, I'm like the king of the screenshot. And so I collect, yeah. any, I'm co- constantly collecting um, anything that I see for inspiration. And so when it comes time to plan, uh, let's say Christmas, for example, I've got about 500 screenshots from last Christmas from Instagram and all these different places. And I tell you a feature, not a lot of people know this on their iPhone. You can search uh, almost anything in the photos app. That's like my favorite feature in the world. It's the best technology. So if in that image, it said, you know, Scott, you could search Scott and it would bring up, you know, where I took a screenshot from this uh, video call. Right. So that, that is my favorite feature. Cause you could say, you know, search tree and all the trees come up or uh, search Christmas and all the Christmas stuff comes up. That's my favorite feature because like I said, I'm the king of the screenshot. <laughs> I am not going to admit how many photos are in my camera roll, but I, I absolutely yeah. use that constantly. Um, it's, I'm not very organized on my phone. So yes, <laughs> shout out to that. Um, number four, you're Ooh, doing great. You're, you're hanging in there. You're almost done. What is, I know, no, see, you're good. You're good. See, it's easy. What is a quote, a piece of wisdom, some sage sound advice that has stuck with you over the years? Uh, a, a mentor of mine. Uh, once told me, I, I'll, I'll never forget the moment. It was the first chance that I ever got the opportunity to share, to speak, to teach on creativity at a church conference. I was very young at the time and I got off the stage and I remember something that he looked at me and he told me, he said, you, you're, you're going to do great at this. If you remember to always look out for the little guy, if you're always trying to help the average person, like don't get caught up And, you know, trying to impress people, trying to chase after big names or become the big name, just constantly try to help the average person that's at their church trying to do ministry. And uh, that really stuck with me. I feel like that's something that I that I I try to keep as my heart and everything that I do still today with CMG, all those different things uh, to not get hung up on, you know, chasing the latest and the greatest, but just helping ordinary people, investing, taking a chance in people. And uh, just trying to, at the end of the day, I guess, uh, equip the saints for ministry, right? Like just help the normal people that we encounter every day. So that's something that stuck with me. Love that. All right, last one. What's one thing that you'd like to communicate to our audience of church leaders? Uh, hmm. I guess I would say cre- it's don't overcomplicate creativity. God has called us all to be creative. We are, we are, we are made in the image of God. We are our creator. Uh, you know, has put create creativity into each and every one of us. It's not as complicated as it maybe sometimes feels. Um, but I would just say like, you know, if you see a great idea, be like me, the screenshot King, like collect those things, bring together the things that inspire you and repurpose it at your church. And it's, it's not, it's not cheating. It's not taking a shortcut to bring together uh, ideas and repurpose them for your unique context. And, you know, I would say like every chance you get to use things like templates and ready-made media like CMG, like you can kick up your creativity, like pour rocket fuel onto like your, your, the creativity level at your church. 
and you're able to put your spin on it, right? It's not, again, it's, 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 uh, it's like a shortcut, but the, it's not, it's not hard to be creative. You've already got it inside of you. And so be a collector of ideas, translate them for your church, use that unique lens that God put directly into you to bring things together. And I guarantee if you do that, um, it'll be exactly what your community needs in this season. Yeah. I love that. I think that's a great note to end on. Just as we're closing, Kendall, can you help people uh, if they want to check out CMG and and just kind of see everything going on there? Where where can they go? Oh, for sure. A great place to to, to go is on, on Instagram. You can follow us, you know, Church Motion. But where I like to hang out and spend most of my time is in the is in our Facebook group. It's called Worship Media and Tech. Uh, and you'll know it because that I have that you'll see the CMG logo right on there. But that's where I spend my time. That and come and hang out with us and um, have some conversations with us there because we're always just trying to learn and get better and keep making improvements to to our, what we're doing in our churches. Yeah, that's great. We'll link to that and certainly link to the website and just give everyone kind of easy ways to check that out. But thank you so much for taking some time today to share with us. Oh, thanks we so are much certainly for having excited, me. Kind of. Yeah, excited about what the future looks like. And we're so grateful for those of you listening or watching this. Again, our heart is to have conversations that empower healthy churches. So we hope that this has done that. If it has, we would love to invite you to share this with somebody. Send them a link, hit subscribe. Uh, You can share on social media. Uh, And you can also leave a review, which helps us get these conversations into more people's ears. So we'd love for you to do that. And we can't wait to be back with you again to have more conversations that help empower healthy churches. This episode of the Church Leadership Lab podcast is brought to you by Ministry Brands, the largest provider of church technology software. Over 90,000 churches rely on Ministry Brands for their single platform solution that brings together all the digital tools a church needs. From online giving to websites to church management software and more, Ministry Brands is leading the way in simple to use, innovative solutions, all with the goal of empowering healthy churches. To learn more, visit ministrybrands.com.